everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Steven. I'm Chris. And we are Just BSing. And as you can tell, your boys are stepping it up just a little bit. Just a little, just a little bit. bit. We, we're, we're, we're pulling a Wayne's World. We got the we got the camera one. Camera two. Camera one. Camera two. Camera one. Camera two. Camera three. Camera three. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was completely unprepared, completely spontaneous. So we may or may not leave that in. If we do, you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, today we are talking a little bit about one of our favorite franchises of all time, Ghostbusters. What do you want? <laughs> Who are you going to call? <laughs> so we just got back from seeing Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I say just, it was a couple of days ago. Um, as of this recording, uh, which is on Sunday, we saw it on Friday. Mm -hmm. So the, the day after it premiered. And uh, we have some thoughts on that, and it inspired us to want to rank all of the Ghostbusters movies. That's right. Um, but before we do that, we have to give an honorable mention to a couple of other Ghostbusters franchise properties that we think fit in really well in yep. the scope of the movie-verse. And that is the 2011, I believe it was, so, yeah. video game, the Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters video game. Ghostbusters video game. It was available uh -huh. on all the consoles. Um, and then you mentioned uh, the Another one that came out about a year ago called uh, Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed. Spirits Unleashed. Which is a direct, basically, following of the Afterlife movie, bringing them back into... Uh, New York. Got it. Got it. I mm -hmm. uh, have not played that one yet, but have very fond memories of playing the original Ghostbusters, uh, the video game. On um, Atari? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Not that. Was there one on Atari? There I remember, was. I remember the NES one, which was god awful, but. Uh, uh, no, they do, did have one on Atari. Do not remember Atari. Um, no. The Ghostbusters video game from the 2000s. Uh, remember playing that very well. The voice acting in that was spot on, of course. And I think you said, uh, who was it? Was it um, Dan, Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd? Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. Dan, Dan Aykroyd has pretty much considered that the third unofficial oh, yeah. Ghostbusters movie. So it was the first time that all characters reprised their roles right. since Ghostbusters two, and there including was big, Bill Murray, who yeah, was always the holdout. That was the holdout. There was that big fallout with Harold Ramis and uh, right, Bill Murray. Right. So. For them to get back and basically reprise their roles, it was a, such a good story too. Yeah. Like it, yeah, it, it picked was. up, I think, nine years after Ghostbusters two, and introduced a rookie. You know, which was really cool. And you played that rookie going yeah, through yeah. it, and that's a fantastic storyline. I can see exactly why Dan Aykroyd considers that the third uh, movie from the Ghostbusters. As franchise. do I. As do I. Yeah, that was so. Has to be an honorable mention within yeah. within the movie verse. And of course, you have to give a shout out to the real Ghostbusters. Oh the yeah, 100%. cartoon of the '80s. Didn't so much watch extreme Ghostbusters, but no, me neither. Yeah, but. Man, the real Ghostbusters. Watched a couple of those, but yeah, real yeah, Ghostbusters. Here and there, like saw an yeah. episode here and there, but the real Ghostbusters was a big part of my childhood. Big part, and they had amazing toys. You got the slime. Oh, the slime it was so great. those things. It and, was so yeah. great. It's, it's unfortunate they didn't look more like their movie counterparts, but right. it's pretty much been canonized. And As you saw from our Toy Box Time Machine video Absolutely. as well, we did have some of those Ghostbuster action figures. We did. We did. Well, you, and, and toys. You, you still have them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had many of them in childhood. Have no, have have none any longer uh, and was very jealous when you pulled out your stash from, from the Toy Box Time Machine. Um, and and as we, I think we've seen with Ghostbusters 2, with Afterlife, and even in Frozen Empire, and don't worry guys, we won't uh, do any spoilers or anything like that. Um, we're, we're barely going to review it. We're just going to give some general thoughts on, on how we felt about the movie and rank it uh, within all of the other movies. Um, but we're definitely seeing some inspiration from the real Ghostbusters into the movie verse. Yes. Starting with Ghostbusters 2, that cartoon had already been out, and think they were trying to tie it a little bit closer together and almost canonize it. So yeah, hundred percent. Definitely, definitely worthy of a mention of an honorable mention in the Ghostbusters franchise. So with that out of the way, we can go ahead and start ranking the movies. Um, we'll just, I think, I think we're on the same page on most of these. So I think we yeah. can just go ahead and go down. It is five, five movies. <laughs> we got it. We got it. It's five movies. Five, five movies to discuss, um, and we will give them our patented. Just BSing rating as we go along. Um, so number five for both of us this is the movie that shall not be named. The movie no. that <laughs> thou shall not be named in the Ghostbusters franchise. Nah, it's the the 2016 yeah. remake, reboot, whatever you want to call it. 
uh, with Melissa McCarthy. Attempted reboot. Attempted reboot. <laughs> Melissa McCarthy, Kristen Wiig, Kate McKinnon, and Leslie uh, Jones. Leslie Jones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, all very funny ladies in their own right, just in this movie, really didn't work. And uh, Paul Feig, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Yeah. Um, the director of the movie who also did Bridesmaids, tried to turn Ghostbusters into Bridesmaids. That's, that's just not a, that's not a fit. That's not a fit. So did not work for me. I sat down, tried to watch it multiple times, finally got through it after about the third or fourth watch. <laughs> finally saw the entire movie. Well, good for you. Wasn't, uh, wasn't my favorite. Um, didn't like how they, they treated a lot of the, the male characters. Um, Chris Hemsworth was made to be a buffoon and that has its place, but uh, yeah. it was, there was an agenda there and it just unfortunately, and they didn't pay respects to the past. Uh, Ghostbusters cast had them in just bit parts that um, didn't respect what had come before them. So did not work for me. And that's good to know because I never watched the movie. I had no desire to see the movie. Uh, initially I did, but then the backlash that the uh, actors and the director and pretty much everybody was giving towards any guy that was giving any type of doubts to that movie really turned me off to that movie. Oh, and, yeah. And then just kind of what you were telling me about some of those scenes in there, I had no desire to see it. I mean, I think uh, a lot of those uh, the actresses do fantastic jobs. Mm-hmm. I've never been a fan of Paul and uh, M- uh, Melissa's work together, uh, so that was another turnoff of it. I like Jenny's work better, a lot better. Jenny's so. got some good work. Jenny's yeah, got some good work. Fantastic yeah, work. Great, so I prefer work. Jenny McCarthy. None, none of none of which we can show on the channel, but uh, well, right. we, we can show a little bit of basketball there. Well, good job, basketball. <laughs> Basketball's are, yeah, fantastic, fantastic in her in her repertoire there. Hey, I like her on the Masked Singer. I've seen the Masked Singer a few times. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good on that. And uh, her magazine work, phenomenal, oh too, God. by the way. Right. Again, can't say, I can't show you much, but <laughs> Jenny McCarthy, fantastic. Uh, yeah, so on our just BSing ranking scale, where do we put the 26? Uh, you didn't see it. I did not see it, but if I had to see it, <laughs> then I would still probably put it as total BS. It's definitely a total BS. <laughs> I, am, I am going to confirm it is a total BS for me. Sorry for any of you out there that do enjoy that movie. I think there were some good concepts there. I just think, or there, there were some good parts in that movie, I will say, having finally gotten through. Yeah. If it had been more like those really strong parts all the way through the movie, it probably could have done a lot better. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but from my understanding of it, they did what Ghostbusters has never done and they made it into more of a slapstick type of comedy Uh, i've heard that but it was it was definitely like i said if you've seen bridesmaids it was the exact same form of humor so didn't really fit in with the style of humor from the ghostbusters so yeah definitely not yeah one of the other reasons why discouraged me from saying right (laughs) right uh all right number four i think for both of us um is going to be frozen empire which we, we just saw um, we sat with it for a couple of days, and I don't think, you can't say we walked out disappointed. We enjoyed it when yeah. we were there watching it. I think it was um, a good next installment, and I hope it's not the last, because I wouldn't want that to be how the Ghostbusters franchise goes out. Um, I think it was, there were so many characters in the movie, and there were so many plot points going on that I think it just kind of got lost in that and you had to build all of this up, and then the finale was just kind of rushed. Yeah. Um, but the characters were fantastic, as always. Just so many of the characters, that, there were so many characters in the movie that so many of them just really didn't have a whole lot to do. Right. And so you, you kind of lost some of the charm that they had, those new characters especially, when, when they were introduced in Afterlife. So it definitely was not a bad movie by any means. It was a really good movie. It was just... I think, especially after waiting as long as we did to see it, it was supposed to come out last year. It was on our anticipated movies list. It got pushed to this year, so we had a little bit longer to wait. Hey, we just, yeah, I think we just wanted more from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's obviously doing decent right now. It's pulled uh, forty-five million yeah. in the first three strong days. Strong opening weekend. It's a strong opening weekend. I agree. Uh, the story did. Uh, it was pretty long, and they didn't have the ability to focus on some of the characters from Afterlife, right. like a podcast and Lucky. Right. They were in the movie not very long, you yeah. know, in general. It did focus around Phoebe again, which was perfectly and fine. And kind of all the Spanglers. And, and all the Spanglers. And, and Gary Gruberson. And Gary and, yeah. Gruberson, yeah. So I thought that was fantastic they did that. There wasn't much 
you know, busting of ghosts throughout. So it was just really telling the story of the, the Ghostbusters in general in New York type of thing. I don't. It's hard not to basically want to talk about it. It's hard not to, it's hard not to spoil, any but spoilers. We promise we wouldn't. Yeah. Um, I will say, and this isn't a spoiler. He was in the trailers. Kamel Nanjiani, um, man, I loved his character. Yeah. I uh, I wish he kind of had a little bit of a different arc in the movie and maybe had become a a Ghostbuster proper, and maybe he will in a future movie if they do it. Um, but there is uh, a scene, again, this isn't spoiler, and I won't say any details, but there's a scene with him and Bill Murray mm -hmm. that just calls back so well to previous yeah. <laughs> Ghostbusters movies and was my favorite scene of the entire movie. It was hilarious. So I wish we'd have seen more of him. And I, I think, I mean, it almost felt like this movie to me was... It almost felt like it could have been a season of a TV show. Like if it was yeah. a Ghostbusters yeah. TV show. I can show, see that. It felt like there was so much going on that if it had been able to be spread out over 10 episodes or something like that, you would have been able to give yeah. a good service to all of the characters and all of the storylines going on. But it was condensed down into about an hour and 55 minute, almost two hour movie. Oh, that you don't want to make the movie any longer. You don't necessarily want to lose any of those plot points. You just didn't get to flesh them out as much as probably could have been done. Yeah, I 100% agree with you on that. After you mentioned that, it did feel more like a series type yeah. of a movie where uh, you're about two, maybe three episodes in. You know, it's starting to ramp up type of a, uh, type of a scenario. Um, but I, I did really enjoy this from the aspect of, you know, it did include some of the older Ghostbusters. Dan Aykroyd uh, is kind of being like the mentor to the, the younger Ghostbusters. Right, right. And that's also something that they do in that uh, game, the Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed. Okay. You got Dan Aykroyd in there and Ernie Hudson Winston. Both, the, both of them have their voices in this game. Oh, nice. And they are pretty much reprising their exact same roles that they do in this movie in that game. So it's really cool that they're actually basically doing the same thing from this game and doing it in the movie as well. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, so dev, even more reason to give those an honorable mention yeah. because yeah. they really are kind of a part of the canon at this point. Yeah, and uh, the cool thing about that game that's out, it's uh, it's kind of like a hunting type of a game. So there's, there's uh, you get to be multiplayer, connect with people online. So you have four Ghostbusters that are trying to hunt a ghost and the, the uh, objective of the ghost is to haunt a building enough nice. to basically take over it. So Four Ghostbusters have to capture the ghost. The ghosts have to scare the crap out of everybody until you win. So it's really cool going back and forth. And there's some, some additional lore that's going into that's cool. it. So, yeah. That's very cool. It's, it's a very cool game. I'm enjoying I'm a, that a lot. I'm definitely going to have to check that out. <laughs> yeah. I, I, had, I, I Honestly, until you mentioned it, didn't even know it existed. So yeah. <laughs> glad to hear there's kind of a continuation of the gaming universe of the Ghostbusters as well. Um, so, yeah. I mean, again, again go see it. I mean, it's, a, it's definitely Fantastic, worth yeah. seeing. If you don't want to spend the money on it, stream it when it comes out as soon as it does. It's certainly worth a watch. It fits really well into the core four Ghostbusters movies. Yep. Um, it just, there was just so much going on that we hope so in much. future movies. Yeah, it does. Kind of it it, says, it, it canonizes the uh, Ghostbusters, uh, the real Ghostbusters cartoon from the 80s. It canonizes right. that, um, which is really cool. It's just a quick scene in there that right. does that. Um, so that also gives you that more nostalgic type feel. Um, very nostalgic. Yeah. Very nostalgic. Um, it's. But uh, then, like I said, they do continue bringing in new Ghostbusters and everything too. Yeah. Yeah. Very. So I'm hopeful that they'll definitely continue with the. You series. know, it's funny is is we were talking about how there's so much going on, but it also it feels very slow in parts of the oh, movie. Oh yeah. Like it's it it's this kind of slow trying to balance so many of these storylines, and then the actual final battle with the big bad. It just rushes by so quickly that it's it's like before you know it, the movie's over and you're like oh what I mean yeah and even bringing in some again older um, characters from previous Ghostbuster movie we got right. the new mayor right yes <laughs> yes so that's not a spoiler he was in he was in the trailer so we've got old Dickless himself Walter Pe <laughs> Walter Peck is back in in the movie as the mayor and still hates the Ghostbusters yeah, still hates it and so fantastic there there were some awesome callbacks mm -hmm. um, won't spoil any other ones but they're you know you. Think, think of what you saw in the first movie. There's some people you're going to see again and maybe some ghosts that you're going to see again. Um, so again, definitely worth watching. What do we give it on our ranking scale? Uh, I give this movie on my rating scale a good rating. I am going to agree. I'm going to go ahead and give it a good as well. Nice. Uh, so we are on the same page. 
So now we are at number three. Number three. Number three. And we are also, I think, still in agreement here. We are putting Ghostbusters 2. Yep. At I'm number three. Ghostbusters 2 for my number three as yep. well. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's going to piss off a lot of people, I'm sure. <laughs> but at the same time, they're like Ghostbusters 2, when you compare it to Ghostbusters 1, is so far and away below the quality of Ghostbusters I agree. 1. In the, in the sense that it's it's basically a rehash of Ghostbusters 1 with a different ghost. Love Vigo. Looks like Triple H. Digging it. Really like him. But it just kind of rehashes so much of the first movie that you'd rather just kind of watch the first movie. Um, it, it, you know, there's, there's some really good stuff. The Rivers of Slime. Dancing Toasters. Statue of Liberty that we don't know how it gets back to the place that it needs to be by the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Vankman putting down Oscar. <laughs> Vankman putting down Oscar. <laughs> Where's Oscar, by the way? Exactly. Um, you got the Nintendo gamepad with the that, That was pretty cool. Yeah. So definitely a lot, a lot to love uh, about Ghostbusters 2. It's still, like, we're putting it on number three in a, a list of Ghostbusters. In a, in a list of other movies, I would watch Ghostbusters 2 ahead of so many other things. I, I still love Ghostbusters 2. But it it just didn't match up to that quality of the first movie. And when you're a kid and you get so excited to watch it, you're just like, oh, that's, man, that's just, I would rather watch the first movie. I did like that it brought more of the stuff from the real Ghostbusters into it, though. It's, yeah. uh, uh, so, some things I also liked from uh, Ghostbusters 2 was the uh, different jumpsuits that they introduced. That was good, uh, The yeah. gray ones. You haven't seen them in Afterlife. Well, which was part of real Ghostbusters also, because you saw yeah. in the, and probably the action figures more so than yeah. anything, they came out with a different color action figure suits and things like that mm -hmm. they kind of matched it to the, to the colors that you see on those yeah and then some of the inspiration from ghostbusters 2 into the ghostbuster video game was the uh, slime thrower mm -hmm. you know so they actually incorporated that into the uh, ghostbuster video game which is really cool so that's why i hope that moving forward they do try to canon canonize that game as yeah. well just because that i do consider that kind of a third Third movie, type and it, it would thing. be really. Easy. I think Dan Aykroyd also like. I said, well, he had. He said it. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> he said I, he considers it a third, a third it's, official it's a third, movie too. As far as Dan Aykroyd is concerned, it's the third movie. And, you know, and it would be very easy for them to do that. Just a throwaway line. Yeah, just throw away, just like they did in this movie. Yeah. One little scene from Frozen Empire that made uh, a yeah. real Ghostbusters game. We've, we've thing. dealt with rookies like you before. Yeah, exactly. That kind of thing. Something, <laughs> yeah. something like that. Or check um, out this pack when we tried doing all these different modifications to yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, Ghostbusters, uh, another about Ghostbusters 2 kind of following the real Ghostbusters, um, they pretty much completely changed Janine. Oh yeah, yeah. Like she, she became the Janine from the from the uh, TV show, from the cartoon, yep. versus the Janine like the kind of. And boy, was she ever sarcastic. like nineties? She was totally nineties. Oh 90s, God, Janine. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> With uh, her uh, so, the magic crystal ball, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then the whole the the love arc with her and Louis. Super Mario and, Brothers. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers. Um, the the love arc with her and Louis versus like she was all about Egon in the first movie. Right. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was kind of those those kind of changes. It was like, oh man, I like the like what was going on in the first one better. So, what do we give it on our rating scale? Uh, Ghostbusters two, I give a good rating. I'm still, you know, I I I was leaning not BS. But I can't give number three a not BS when I gave number four a good. So I'm also giving it a good. There Both go. of those are leaning like good, good to not, not BS to good. Like they're yeah. right there. They're 3.5 on a five point scale. <laughs> there you go. Um, all right. Now we're into number two. Number two. I think two. we are also in agreement again. I don't know. What's your. Ghostbusters Afterlife. Afterlife. Yeah. Yes, sir. 100%. Yeah. Number two, Afterlife. Ah, so again, sorry guys, if you didn't like Afterlife, I know there were some some haters of Afterlife out there. I don't see how there could be, but I'd, sh I'd it, be shocked. It's just, I, I think there's like people out there that don't like when you rely too heavily on nostalgia or you use the likenesses of people who've passed, but I think mm, if the okay, family I gives you permission that. to do it and the family is happy with what was done and it pays the kinds of respects that we saw paid to both Harold Ramis and the character of Egon, in Afterlife, how do you hate it? And we didn't. Like, we, yeah. we love that movie. It was, like, it pulled at the heartstrings. Yep. It gave you the right amount of nostalgia. It reintroduced the franchise in a way that I think was very, very strong. The new characters were great. Um, you know, people... 
would say like, oh, well, we didn't, you, you didn't like the 2016 because it was female characters. Well, Phoebe Spangler is a female character, a young female character, and I thought she was great. Oh, she was fantastic. I thought her mom was great. Thought I think she's a great, great addition to the to the cast. Lucky was awesome as well. Lucky I mean, was yeah. awesome as well. Absolutely. I, I, I didn't. I, when I was first watching that movie, I didn't expect her to be kind of a, a Ghostbuster, you know, yeah. type of thing. And all of a sudden, bam, she's kicking ass she's as kicking a Ghostbuster. Ass. Like, love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They and, did, in my opinion, the best way you can reboot a franchise is by grabbing the older generation and bringing in that new new generation like mm-hmm. that. Um, Phoebe figuring out who she is with uh, obviously yeah Egon's help right right <laughs> but I mean what a way to reintroduce a franchise that has been gone for thirty years oh yeah know? oh yeah and and the, the the effects that they used to bring Harold Ramis back as it oh, goes fantastic oh, it was beautiful it was beautiful and and love that they carried over some of that into. Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, yes. some of those kinds of effects um, in a completely different way. But different effects, even some of the same, almost the same type of scenes. There's yeah. like two. Uh, there's a scene from uh, Afterlife that is almost exactly the same thing mm-hmm. that they do in Frozen Empire. Yep. No spoilers, but it's really cool kind of. Uh, yeah, but a, a completely different like emotional connection there. Like yeah, it, yeah. And it's done in, in the same way, but a completely different way yep. that, you know, just and pulls at your heartstrings yeah. a different way. So. It, yeah, it was it was it was just it well, it was good. I it mean was it was good. it was a it was really fantastic reintroduction. I've watched it multiple times since yep. it came out. I own it. I own it. I've seen it four or five times yeah, myself. Probably friend, about that I'm, I'm probably gonna rewatch it, you know, now that we're doing this video, I wanna watch it again. So Yeah. Actually let's go ahead and cut. We'll go we'll go ahead and rewatch <laughs> it instead of doing this video. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um but yeah, it's it, Man, it just I can't say enough good things about it. I, I, man, it there couldn't have been, for me, there prob- I, I say this, there probably could have been a better way to do it, but I don't see how. Like, just yeah. the, the, way that, the way that they incorporated everything from the past and brought it into the future. Yeah. And a, a completely, and a new, it was kind of cool to see it outside of New York, too. Yeah. To see it in Oklahoma, and like there's a mine, and you bring back Gozer, which is bring a good way Gozer. to tie it to the first movie. And it's just great to have how they, in, uh, they incorporated the lore, mm-hmm. you know, uh, from why it, it moved over. And there's just some of the things that they could have taken from uh, Afterlife and incorporated into Frozen Empire, which could have boosted it up just a bit right. more. 100%. But, you know, it's like, still. It was, <laughs> it's because the characters that they created for us were so good mm-hmm. that Frozen Empire got knocked down a couple of notches because yeah. those characters didn't have enough to do. Yeah, there wasn't a, a, a podcast and Lucky, for instance, didn't have long screen time. No, well, and even to oh, yeah. like Trevor, to be honest, Finn Wolfhard's character. I mean, yeah. he yeah. Mm-hmm. he's a big part of like he's part of that core Spangler family. And it just felt like he was kind of almost a placeholder right. in, in a lot of ways. And, and it's just because there were so, so many, many characters. So many characters. Uh, yeah. And that's why, again, why we said it probably could have been a three-hour movie or a series. Uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Just, I mean, hey, Finn is no stranger <laughs> to series on Netflix. I would love to see that happen with the Ghostbusters. And then that way you don't have to, like, pigeonhole them into this two-hour runtime. So what do we give... Uh, where are we? What do we give, do we give Afterlife? Life? Uh, I give Afterlife a so good rating. You're giving it so good. Mm-hmm. I'm sticking with good. I'm sticking with good. It's it's not quite so good for me, but it is really, really close. If the last two were bordering not BS good, this is bordering so good. There like you it's, go. It's high up. It's high up. It's like a 4.5. It's, it's getting real close. And of course... So you got to average up then, right? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't play that way. Four point four nine. Just make sure that we're on, on the same page here. And of course, number one, it should be everyone's favorite yeah. Ghostbusters movie. If it's not, shame on you. Shame on shame. you. Shame on you. It's Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters. the original nineteen eighty four mm-hmm. classic. Man, from the the cast to the music to the pacing of the story to the quips and the boss fight and. The Marshmallow Man and just the city itself as its own character, almost to me a perfect movie. Oh yeah, there's just I mean you just nailed everything on the head right there. The only thing I can add is it's Miller time. It's Miller yeah. time. <laughs> I mean it's a fantastic movie. Uh, introduced some great characters, uh, scenes that you're like, 
okay, how did they get the whole army in here involved, you know, so quickly? They couldn't do that with Frozen Empire, uh, Dickless, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was fantastic, uh, him being in there. Um, I don't know, it that, it like Ghostbusters is just one of the all-time, my all-time favorite movies. Yep. Uh, whenever I go on a trip, usually when I'm flying, it's I have Ghostbusters, Back to the Future, and uh, at least one of the Indiana Jones movies that I'm usually always watching. And maybe I'll watch something new, but at least Ghostbusters is one of those I, must-travel movies. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. It's it's a travel movie for me. It's a have to watch it at least one or two times a year type of a movie. Always do that with at least the first Ghostbusters. I probably watch the second one too, even though it's number three. <laughs> still watch that movie. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's, I mean, let's just give it a rating. It's so good. It's so good. It's yeah. so good. <laughs> it's, it's so good. And I don't think it could have been better. I don't think there was anything they, even the effects for the time. I mean, and they, a lot of them still hold up. A lot of the effects. I mean, there are some scenes that were cut, um, that I would love for them to reintroduce in there. Mm. Um, specifically, I know there's one where there's, um, uh, there's Dan Aykroyd's uh, character, uh, Ray Stance, and then uh, Peter Venkman. They're just sitting there on the bench, uh, park bench, waiting for a ghost that's running by, set the trap, suck him in. You know, yeah, that kind of thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a couple other scenes like that that were cut from the movie just for Why do I feel like I saw that in the movie? I must have watched an extended edition. There may have like been. That. If there is an extended edition, I have not seen that. I've seen that scene um, basically online somewhere else. And I think there's even a scene where they talk to like a dead president or something yeah. like that. Uh, I know they the, mentioned that in either Ghostbusters or Ghostbusters 2. I don't remember which one. Yeah, I feel like I remember seeing something about the, the yeah, conversation it, with the president. The the ghost BJ, um, <laughs> I think yeah, was I think that may have been a little, little bit of a longer scene uh, that, that was cut down some as well. Because I remember seeing well, some more of that. Well, and that was it's also so funny because that movie had scenes and jokes that when you're a kid went right over your head. No and then you got on. to rewatch it again as an adult and it's even funnier because you're like, oh my God, I never got what they were talking about. I never got that innuendo as a kid. Yeah. I remember one time my sister and one of her friends, uh, all three of us were watching Ghostbusters and we got to the end scene where Lewis uh, is get breaking out of the dog statue and is stuck on his head. He's like, somebody turn on the lights. And then he gets the head off and he's like, oh man, the superintendent's going to be pissed. And we just sat there and re rewound that and watched that scene like four or five times, just laughing our asses yeah. off. You know? <laughs> it was, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it, kids loved it, adults loved it, and the the humor was witty and it, mm -hmm. and a lot of times subtle. And I think that's why that's what separates Ghostbusters at number one and the 2016 at number five so far apart. I mean, you could put number five and number 10, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> There's not even another five movies, but put it all the way down there. It's so far apart because of that is the, the, the humor that they tried to insert in 2016 was just so over, over the top and hit you on the head. It just didn't, it wasn't witty. It didn't, it didn't give you the same kind of, um, like sometimes you kind of got to sit there and think about it a second because P Peter Vinkman just said something crazy and you're like, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and then you start laughing about it. Like it's, it's not that kind of more, I guess, intelligent adult humor that, that the original Ghostbusters had because of the, the talent of those comedians and the talent of the director. And they worked well in synergy, whereas it just kind of fell apart in 2016. Well, I said, I'll take your word for that again. Yeah, I you haven't never seen it. it. Don't I, ever I, plan I on seeing like, it. I feel like I ought to make you watch it sometime <laughs> just so you know what I'm talking about. Well, if we do that, then we're going to reprise the uh, movie reaction. <laughs> Maybe it'll be easier now with three cameras. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So that's that's just a quick video for you. We uh, we were inspired to make a Ghostbusters video because of Frozen Empire. Um, let us know down in the comments if you have seen Frozen Empire or by the time this video comes out, who knows how long it'll take. By the time this video comes out, you may have seen some of the reviews, uh, haven't made the decision yet to watch it. Let us know what you're thinking about it. May even pop up a poll on our community page uh, with all of those movies in there and uh, let you guys vote on your favorite of the Ghostbusters franchise. If Ghostbusters 1 is at 100%, I'll probably be pretty surprised. Speaking of the community page, though, if, you, uh, if you've been checking that out on our channel, you may have seen something that we posted pretty recently that had you know, something similar to this guy behind me. Um, coming up for the channel and uh, definitely want you to keep your eyes out 
for that if you're a fan of our McFarlane Superpowers videos or any of our action figure videos. I think you're really gonna like what you see inside that glorious Superman packaging. Um, and if you're not a fan of those videos and still like Superman, I still think you're going to enjoy that. Um, speaking of the Go Figure playlist, it's linked down below, go check that out. Uh, our Game On playlist will also be linked yep. since we talked about some of the video games in this video as well. So go check that out. We're slowly building some of those gaming videos thanks to Chris doing the heavy lifting on that. Well, uh, you mentioned you never played the, uh, the original uh, Ghostbusters game on Atari. I have my old Atari still. Maybe I have the Ghostbusters. I may have to play that and just show you, you exactly. Might, you, might need to, you might need to let me play that too so I can see what, what I missed out on. Uh, and speaking of your gaming, you just posted a very cool Indiana Jones and the Fate yep. of Atlantis. Your favorite moments or best yeah, moments from the game. Best moments for me. My opinion, yep. the best moments on there. It's yep. really great. I broke it down. By all the uh, by th the three paths, the fist, uh, wits, and teams path. Um, I'm also still working on the extended long play. There are other uh, uh, YouTube pages that have the uh, complete walkthrough. Sorry, complete walkthrough, but they only chose one of the paths. Our page is going to be the only one that has all three. Amateurs. Amateurs. Damn amateurs. What are we dealing right, with here? Hey, I'm looking to cut it down. Right now it's about nine hours long. So. <laughs> this could be why they're amateurs. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, I'm still cutting that down. Nine we, hours. We will get it cut down. Chris will get it cut down. And we will not give you a nine-hour video. Uh, the Monkey Island video was four hours and, and some change. So if you haven't checked that out, go check that one out as well. Um, we're, we're doing, the, like, Chris is loving the point and click stuff I right do. now. We're, I do. We're doing some of the old stuff because we're old guys, but we'll get to the newer things eventually. Eventually. Well, as the, yeah, I was going to say, and, and the only reason I even really did the Fate of Atlantis was the fact that the Indiana Jones uh, and the, uh, the Circle, uh, the Great Circle. Great, yeah, Great Circle. Uh, is coming out at the end of it this so year. Good, it looks so good. Yeah. So I was like, I got to get in on this. Got to get in on that. <laughs> well, and you, you also got a very cool collectible. Uh, another video that we recently posted that yes, kind of inspired you I to did. want to play that Fate mm -hmm. of Atlantis again. The uh, original movie poster or re-release movie the poster re from 1982. Yeah, 82. So the original Raiders of the Lost Ark yeah. came out in 81. They re-released it in 82 and they came out with a new movie poster. I found one on Minty eBay. Fresh condition. Minty Fresh, fantastic. So good. So good. So good. I, yeah, I almost questioned whether it was actually right? authentic, but it was. So yeah. I was taking yeah. it. <laughs> I think he probably just peed on of something he bought in the store and <laughs> said it was said it was from 1982. No, it is it is legit. I've seen it. It's awesome. Uh, that's kind of what inspired me to get that Superman collectible. All right, I nice. Couldn't let you have all the fun. <laughs> had, to, had to get something I've been looking at for, for a while. So guys, keep your eyes out for all of those videos. Go check out the back catalog, all the videos we've mentioned somewhere, somewhere, somewhere around here. <laughs> it'll be linked. It'll be linked below. Go check out all of those playlists when you get a chance. Let us know what you thought about Ghostbusters Frozen Empire if you've seen it. Let us know what your favorite Ghostbusters movie is and how they rank for you. You've heard how ours rank. How does it compare to yours? I'm sure there's a lot of you very upset with some of the things <laughs> we put above others. Yeah, you know what? I don't think so. I think our community is going to pretty much side with this. I hope so. I hope so. And if you don't, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. So anyways, guys, keep on busting because you know it makes you feel good. And we will catch you in the next video. Have a great one, guys.